Um, good afternoon, all, and welcome to this session organized by D Life Healthcare Foundation, the pioneering low carb movement in India. This is another podcast in the series of very inspiring and educational discussions conducted by D Life on a regular basis, many of which are available on their YouTube channel as well. Um, before introducing today's special guests, I would like to say a few words about the nine plus years journey till now. D-Life was founded by an IIT engineer, Mr. Anup Singh, and nurtured by passionate and highly experienced coaches like Shashikant Ayengar and Arun Kumar. Today, D-Life boasts of its network consisting of low-carb nutritionists spread across India and abroad, who are doing exemplary work in the field of metabolic health improvement and remission of lifestyle diseases. These coaches are equipped to provide support to any adaptable and disciplined person, irrespective of their line of diet, whether it is vegetarian, non-vegetarian, lacto-ovo, or carnivore, to name a few. If you are an aspiring nutritionist, D-Life also offers India's only and a very structured, well-designed, and comprehensive diploma course open for intake throughout the year. The information and review of the course can be found on the DLife website and the social media platforms. Benefited from this course and carrying forward the legacy in her own way is our today's guest, Sindhu Vijay. And with her, we also have our, her better half, Mr. Vijay. As I said earlier, her story is special for a lot of reasons. In the times where people say low carb is not sustainable, it cannot be carried out for a long time, this is the couple who has been following low carb since 2015. They have published two books which contain low carb and keto cooking basics and some delicious recipes. And they also have a venture in Chennai called Salada, which serves nutritious and healthy food to people of Chennai. It gives me immense pleasure today to host this couple who wears many hats. Welcome Sindhuji and Vijayji. Um, shall we start this conversation with Sindhuji and a bit of back flashback where Sindhuji, we would like to know a bit more about you and what led you to Loka. So can you please give us a bit of the background? Before that, kindly, uh, you can avoid G. So <laughs> you can call me Vijay and Sindhu. Okay. So yeah. okay. we are more comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Susakta. Hello. Uh, warm welcome. Thanks. First thing, I would like to uh, thank our guru, Dr. Vijay Raghavan. See, uh, I would lost my another kidney if he if I didn't meet him. No? So I would like to thank him first, who introduced me uh, LCHF Low Carb by Fat Diet. Another thing, uh, Sashikant, Anup, and Arun Kumar. So yes. these people you know, who introduced me to D-Life community, and made me to do a day life course. Yes. And now uh, I become low carb nutrition advisor because of them. So thank you so much for them. And of course, my husband who made me to do all these things. So thank you, Vijay. Yes, um, my journey, okay. So before uh, uh, my marriage, maybe, um, in my childhood, school days, college days, no, I've been overweight. Yes. Uh, do I need to look at camera or look at you? So you, you can keep speaking. It's fine. Yes. You're getting what you yes. I'm comfortable seeing you. Yes. <laughs> so I've been overweight uh, during my school days, college days. You know, I had uh, PCOD, irregular periods. I had hyperpigmentation issue and a lot of things. Okay. So I, I, I've been a person who uh, was eating rice in all three meals. Mm -hmm. So I used to take a lot of rice and all the junk, all the cool drinks, you know, whatever the junk is available, I mm -hmm. used to take so and, nice. Yeah, I, I like to have those foods. I like to have sweets, everything. Yes. So I've been this uh, uh, struggling to lose my weight. Whenever I try to lose my weight, I restrict my portion. Uh, I restrict my food intake. Mm -hmm. But end of the week, I mean, end of uh, five or seven days, I will start overeating. It will induce me to eat more. So that is how it went. So uh, in 2009, mm -hmm. I had, uh, suddenly I had severe headaches. And um, um, I had uh, blood vision, 
Mm-hmm. I I wasn't able to walk for more than fifteen minutes because I oh. feel very heavy, uh, and uh, there'll be a lot of pain in my legs. I have to take rest every fifteen minutes wherever I go. So that's what happened suddenly. So I, we went to uh, a doctor, a general physician. He checked us. He checked my BP. Mm-hmm. At that time, it was about two hundred. So so we were shocked about this. He told me, uh, "I am a hypertensive patient. I have to uh, go through uh, other uh, tests, everything." So yeah. we checked. We did a lot of. They did a lot of analyzations for yes. m- maximum two months, mm-hmm. and then they mm-hmm. found that my kidney is shrunk. My left kidney is shrunk. It's not getting good amount of blood flow. So uh, my left kidney was working just eighteen percent. No. So they told they told me uh, you have to undergo some surgery to reduce your BP. Mm-hmm. So it will be better to take care of your another kidney. That's what they said. Yes. So uh, immediately we went to a surgery. And everything went well, but uh, mm-hmm. the restriction uh, was uh, before even before the surgery. They told me to have uh, no salt food. Mm-hmm. I was taking no salt food for almost one to one and a half months. So they were. Uh, apart from that, I didn't have any restriction with the foods. I was taking all the carb-rich foods. <laughs> yes. I wasn't aware about this macros, micros, nothing, uh, nothing about nutrition. I was just twenty-one years at the time. I wasn't aware of all these things. So I was taking all the carb-rich foods. Even I was taking packed foods. I continued taking sweets because they told me to restrict just salt. So I restricted all the salt rich foods and I restricted salt. So it continued and after two months, uh, I got uh, surgery. I've undergone surgery. After then also, I had few restrictions. They told me to uh, have um, no, I mean, to reduce my salt intake and uh, reduce the non-veg intake, intake and can go for some activities, physical activities. These were their uh, suggestions. Advice. Okay, so what I did is instead of having three meal, I mean rice for uh, three meals, I started having idlis or dosa for breakfast, and of course a super good food chapati for dinner, <laughs> and rice for lunch. You know, see, um, and also they told me I should not increase, uh, uh, my weight should not increase. So I have to take care of my weight. Yeah. So I did portion control. I did reduce the food intake. Okay, but uh, whenever I feel hungry, I read. I had uh, the cashew biscuits. I used to have. I don't want to mention the brand name, but I used to have those cashew and pista based biscuits a lot. So after then, also my weight was in in increased phase. Uh, after surgery, my weight was 62 kgs. Actually, my ideal body weight is 60, 59 to 60. So yes. uh, after surgery, it was 62, 63 kgs. And uh, in 2013, it was, I mean, before my ma- during my marriage period, I was 68. Yes. So it keeps increasing even with the portion control because I was having all these uh, regular foods. Yes. I did yoga, everything. Uh, I've included walking, all the physical activities, but still weight was an increased pace. Okay. And uh, my PCOS irregular periods remains even after the operation, all these things remain same. So uh, in 2014, after my first pregnancy, it was almost 83 kgs. So uh, in 2015, uh, I couldn't lose my uh, post-pregnancy weight. So I happened to uh, see Dr. Vijay Raghavan, who introduced me to low-carb, high-fat diet for some other issue, where I saw a board of uh, which contains foods to have and uh, foods to avoid list. In foods to have, there, he was mentioned that you can have eggs, non-veg, ghee, butter, coconuts, you know, I was very happy to see this because I love non-veg foods. 
is that i have to restrict because of the protocol they suggested yes, advised, so yes. uh, and then the foods to avoid list he mentioned uh, rice wheat all the milk all the foods we were taking so i just inquired about him about the list he had mentioned so he he invited us for this session so he, he was uh, conducting session every weekends we didn't know that after inquiring about this he invited for us to the session so we attended the session uh, we actually loved the way he explained with the scientific explanation you know so we went home with bunch of eggs mm. that's where this low carb high fat diet journey started okay that's nice yes. that's nice so what happened after that did you immediately um, get into that routine were there any hurdles how difficult was it to transition to completely opposite end of the spectrum yes the problem was see my uh, relatives even my own sister mm -hmm. she explained mm -hmm. that you shouldn't follow low uh, high fat diet uh, which actually so she explained about the ketones and all you know it will damage your another kidney so don't follow this uh, don't do this that everything uh, they told mm -hmm. but i blindly followed dr vijayaragan because he is a doctor who is explaining all these things mm -hmm. let us yes. try it's okay because yes. i have tried all those things i have tried uh, you know uh, the special diets the what is that seven day diet they suggest i i tried lot of things okay why not we try this this one also so i tried this uh, and doctor explained all those things about the high fats why should we eat high fat foods why should concentrate on proteins why should we reduce carbs everything he explained in a good manner so we yes. loved so we started immediately and there were some uh, issues actually uh, i didn't face much uh, discomfortness but he faced lot of discomfortness he had diarrhea and mm -hmm. headache uh, a lot of issues right yes so how we overcome within a week okay it was there for one week uh, yeah. to 10 days maximum then uh, we are very comfortable but the biggest challenge is whenever we go out uh, so we we don't have any good options to uh, within the diet uh, so that is a major issue we had faced and there are a lot of negative uh, reviews from our own friends and relatives even from the families there are no support at all because that time it was very new to india in 2015 very few people had followed a low carb or keto diet so that is the biggest challenge yes yes so um coming back to you vijay ji how did you get into the diet was it just to support her or did you also understand the benefits or did you have your own health issues to deal with um which is why you uh, adapted this way of eating one minute yeah that's fine i think there is a issue in the camera yeah i don't have any uh, physical issues uh, that time uh, i was little bit overweight maybe uh, my uh, did actual weight should be 65 but i was 68 to 69 so it's very uh, normal uh, range but uh, i want blindly for uh, support my wife because she was very interested for the diet i think there is some issue in the camera just a minute so i just wanted to support her and uh, she was very interested uh, since she was very overweight so she want to lose much weight mm -hmm. and uh, dr vijay raghavan is very known to us for a very long time and uh, after attending a session so we are very much convinced about the diet and why we need to follow so anyway even uh, that time we were not good weight so even we need to follow this diet to take care of the uh, future so that is the only thing uh, we had decided that day and we started after starting low carb diet within 3 months uh, i lost nearly 13 kg mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing is uh, my periods got regular mm -hmm. and uh, i had lot of black patches around my neck and on my elbow you know? uh, yes. it started themnish mm -hmm. and uh, another thing i have to uh, wake up uh, i have to wake up during uh, sleep at least twice uh, because of this urination issue so it got stopped 
within three months of diet. So we felt good with the diet. Okay. So, so, and as yeah. people are suspecting that you would have issues with the kidney that was left, um, yeah. did you have any kind of issues after that? Uh, during that period, see, in the initial phase, I didn't explain about I didn't explain much about the diet to people. I mm. used to hide my hide about the diet I'm following mm. because I want to show the result. Because my sister already explained about uh, this thing. No, it, it might damage another kidney. Also, don't follow this thing. So I started. I told her that I I'm not going to follow the diet, but I followed. Yes. <laughs> right. So I started hiding myself from this, and uh, we wherever we go, we always go with the reason. Because when, if I'm visiting my mom's home, you know, she'll offer some rice or some sweets or something, you no, know, as a welcome drink. Some it might be milk or no. So we always go with the reason that we have stomach issue, we have this thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know these kind that's of. That's how you deal with people. Yeah, yes. that's how to feed you <laughs> the food out yes. of the diet. Yes, that's yes. nice. After three months or four months of diet, you no, know, when we see these positive things, then we explain. Yes. And uh, yes, yes, Rajita. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. You you go ahead. I'll ask. Keep my questions yeah. for later. And uh, suddenly, doctor called. Doctor Vijayaragavan called me uh, mm -hmm. after three or four months of diet. I think he called me. Uh, maybe six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, so he called me. Uh, can you suggest whatever you are following to the people uh, mm -hmm. who are coming to me? That's what he asked. Yes. I said, see, God has given one life. Yes. Right. Whatever we learn, whatever we learn, whatever we experience, mm -hmm. we have to share. Yes. So I said, immediately I said, okay, why not? So that's how this consultation journey started. That's nice. And then how did D-Life happen? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So before that, actually, uh, we went to the doctor and uh, we were asking that he was conducting session uh, once in a month or once in two months. Uh, then we asked uh, whether we can uh, get it to many people. So yes. I was working in a BPO at that time. So he told, yes, definitely we can reach more people. And we had done some uh, local uh, uh, marketing for the session. And uh, then we were conducting sessions every week. And there were some uh, even 10 to 20 people attending the session every week. And uh, it, it reached many people. And many people used to come for the consultation. And uh, once, he are, once he is unable to manage the entire show, then only uh, he checked with Sindhu for the uh, diet uh, part. Okay. Then she also uh, started a diet consultation along with him. And uh, they both uh, almost uh, consulted, consulted more. more than 2,000 patients. Oh, and that's a... Yes, yeah, yes. And she consulted more than 2,000 patients. And uh, most of them, they had reversed their issues, almost some 80% with various issues like overweight or uh, diabetes, diabetes hypertension. hypertension. Who have come with the issue, definitely they had been reversing everything without any medicines in a span of three to six months. Uh, even the people with uh, insulin, high insulin of uh, 30 units and 60 units per day, they had reversed completely. We have seen many cases and we were uh, very happy that time. And also we dealt with type 1 diabetes, infertility issues, no? Yes. Uh, so we dealt with all those uh, people, all these patients. Yes. So after then, uh, we started Salada and I wasn't focused much on consultation. I, fo I started focusing on Salada mm -hmm. and uh, I happened to, uh, and after that, uh, I inquired with uh, Sashikant about the courses because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't able to do consultation without any certification because uh, it's high fat diet, no? So people yes. are very expecting. Without doctor's support, we can't guide people. So I inquired with Sashikant about any courses. So he uh, he told me about day life. I start. I have done my day life course after that only, and now I'm a certified uh, nutrition advisor, low carb nutrition. That's great. And it's a very noble gesture on your part, trying to impart whatever you learned through your life experiences to other people uh, with similar issues or issues with their metabolic health. Um, along your journey, did you notice your change in your own metabolic markers? Because um, 
since you said you had PCOS uh, before your before you switched to low carb diet, did you check your metabolic markers and the sugar, insulin, etc.? Did you find any change in that? Yeah. Uh, before that, sorry, I wasn't aware of my uh, HbA1c levels before that because I didn't check. Uh, mm -hmm. But after uh, and also this insulin levels, insulin uh, home IR, no, all these things I I was not aware. But after yeah. starting the diet, I checked my insulin levels and uh, uh, it was less than five. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, fasting insulin was less than five. We mm -hmm. even now we are maintaining our HOMA IR uh, less than 1.5. Yes. And uh, yeah, my HPMNC, it will be always less than five. Oh. It'll be between 4.7 to 4.9 max. So it never went above five. My levels will be uh, normally between five point four to five point six, but I am on the border range. Yes. So she maintains the below five. That's good. And my cholesterol levels, my HDL is uh, sixty five, and triglyceride is just forty five. Oh. Before this diet, uh, whenever she do go for a master health checkup, because uh, due to her kidney issues, she need to do master health checkup every year. And yes. whenever she meet the doctor, she will be having a lot of complications and uh, most of her levels will be very high, uh, mm -hmm. abnormal levels. But after this diet, maybe from 2016 and 17, most of her parameters are within the range. Whenever she used to consult the doctor, the doctor will say that no, all parameters are within the range, so you no need to worry about anything. So that's how uh, she made in her report. That's nice. And the fear will be there. Before look up, the fear will be there whenever I meet doctor. Sometimes my BP rises to 130, 140. But after look up, it will be like 110, 70 always. Yes. That's that's a very good number. Yes. And how about the salt intake? You were advised to reduce the salt. Did that also <laughs> change with the look up diet? I'm taking good amount of salt. I used to take at least a liter of lime juice with salt mm -hmm. every day. Even now, I'm taking it. So uh, my diet means, see, I take very simple. I don't, uh, see, I've written tons of, uh, maybe a lot of uh, recipes, recipe mm -hmm. book because of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I stick to myself with basic foods like eggs and vegetables as my breakfast. Yes. And for lunch, uh, it will be mostly some non-veg, veggies, curd, these things. And for dinner, uh, always our salad. Salad with paneer and eggs. This is what very simple diet we follow. And throughout the day, we take coconuts or nuts as snack and lime juice with salt. This is what our diet. Even though she has written a lot of uh, recipes, so it is very uh, easy when we follow with a simple diet. Uh, right. So we yes. not look after every day and... Uh, so most of the days we start with the eggs only. Yeah. Okay. Actually, he is good. <laughs> I want him to follow to support me. So I made a lot of varieties. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> so he helped me. Yeah. Um, so coming to the recipe part, you also have written a cookbook with lots of recipes and basics of um, low carb and keto diet. So can you tell us the inspiration behind writing a book? And you uh, you have published two, not just one. So yeah. how was the response to that book and um, what basics have you included in that book? Yes. yes. See, initially, as I told you that we, we have been doing uh, session, doctor sessions every week. So we used to meet a lot of people. And mm -hmm. whenever the doctor used to give a, a lecture on the science part and she used to explain on the diet part, uh, most people, they'll be asking for the recipes because uh, if they want to follow the diet, they need more of recipes. And the doctor actually advised us to give a normal recipe, like 10, 5 to 10 recipes. We used to, and she written some 5 to 10 recipes initially. I am not sure about the number. And we were taking a printout and giving to all the people. This is how it started. Then one of our friends uh, suggested that uh, better we can go as a book. So it will help more people. And that's how it started. So initially, we are thinking about some uh, 30 recipes, 50 recipes, and finally it ended with 100 recipes. So yes. she took a very good initiative that time and uh, by watching a lot of uh, references from the YouTube and other things and she had uh, completely 
maybe uh, she had done a lot of changes for funding to lchf because there are that time uh, lchf recipes and keto recipes are very limited because yes. more, very few yes. people were following that time and mm -hmm. uh, that's how the book uh, got launched and the second book actually uh, we thought that instead of going for the consultation so many people don't come for a consultation right so it is better we can give it in a book format like uh, how to get into this diet very easily uh, yes. so that's that's how we are uh, developed the second book more than that people uh, we started seeing messages that people following keto low carb on their own by seeing videos or reading magazines no and they are they are not following properly and they're getting into a lot of health issues so we thought why don't we give a complete guidance to low carb uh, high fat diet or keto Hmm. through this book that's how uh, second book came yes based on our experience only we had written that book yes this knowledge sharing was i think very important um and it played probably a, a very vital role in the life of a lot of people who started at least making those recipes um yes from low carb and keto domain yeah um so when you um started this low carb diet did you talk to your previous doctor how did they um, how did they respond to that and have you ever or did you just change the doctor if you couldn't change the doctor just change the doctor is that what you followed sorry i didn't get you so i said uh, the previous doctor who had advised you to follow the standard diet yeah yeah yes with low fat no veg no non veg and uh, less salt, all that. Did you again went back to the doctor and try to tell him that this is what I'm following or this is what I'm doing now and it's helping me? So no, uh, uh, I got operated in government hospital. Okay. So uh, I couldn't meet him again. Okay, fine. Yes. Yeah. So that's all just a standard chart given and there was then no follow up with you or nothing else? No, uh, no, it, there were no uh, dietary protocols. <laughs> no no dietary protocols. Nothing. Yes. nothing. Yes. Even after the operation, I was having a lot of biscuits uh, in the hospital itself. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. There is anything. <laughs> because I, I was not aware. My mama used to say, you can have biscuits are very good. You can have biscuits. So I, I, I was having these biscuits and all. Even after the operation, I had uh, taken uh, cool drinks. I continued taking cool drinks, all the bakery foods, everything. Yes. Because I, I, the body was like, see, it's not like I have, I always say people that it's not a behavioral issue. It's a hormonal issue. When your body asks for these foods, you have to. You will be ha having this. You can You can't stop. Okay, so you have to correct your hormone to correct your behavior first. Yes, right. Yeah. So that's how it changed. After entering into low carb fat diet, I didn't have any craving. I didn't have any sugar craving or see, even if it is there before me, I don't eat. Because of the hormonal correction and the awareness and the knowledge we gain. Yeah. People who want to follow any dietary prot protocol, it's not about just follow this thing, that thing at this time or drink this thing uh, at that time. No, uh, Instead of that, they have to uh, update their knowledge about what they are eating. Why should they avoid all those things? Why should they eat these foods? And what are the benefits are they, they are getting out yeah. of it? So yeah. they should be aware of what are uh, all those things. Yes. Um, so even if people know that that is the right thing to do, sometimes it gets boring and people think that it is restrictive or it is not sustainable. But you have been following it for almost nine years now, from 2015 till now, it's almost nine years. Was there any point where you thought so or where you swayed there was a bit um, going <laughs> overboard with the uh, carbs? Low carb, yeah. Yes. To be frank, uh, whenever we talk to people like uh, any particular diet, they'll be asking that whether we'll be getting bored. And uh, to be frank, uh, especially in South India, if you ask many people, the most of their uh, breakfast will be either idli or dosa. 
and the lines will be either uh, normal rice and they'll be having a different kind of uh, uh, like sambar, rasam and other things. Night they will have uh, either idli or chapati. This is a yes. regular food they used to have. But yes. when we talk about the diet, we have seen we have many options within the diet also. But they will say that whether we'll get bored, but actually not. So it's all about our mindset. Once we understand what to eat and what not to eat, and with the science explanation, then it will be very easy to follow it. Even now we are we follow the diet very easily because we have plenty of options, but we follow it very simply. Even uh, Sashi told that he used to have eggs every day. It's very easy, yes. right? Yes, it's easy. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yes. You were going to say something. No. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. Um. I was just going to ask: Do you complement your diet with some other things like fasting or what kind of exercise do you do nowadays? Yes, I prefer yoga maximum. I prefer yoga. Mm -hmm. I do walking, and yes. um, we were doing. See, uh, in the initial phase, see, uh, low carb high fat diet is just to move your body from glucose burning to fat burning mode. Yes. After then, you have to burn the fat stored in your body. For that, you have to start intermittent fasting. That yeah. is the ultimate goal. Okay. Yeah. So after a month of diet, we started intermittent fasting, slowly moved into 16 to 18 hours fasting. Even now, we are doing 16 to 18 hours fasting for sure. Uh, yeah. uh, almost uh, for eight to nine years in this journey, we are doing yeah. 16 to 18 hours every day. Okay. And then uh, the two meals got reduced to one meal uh, we have done different styles of fasting so uh, initially we were doing one meal a day uh, once a week and then twice a week and yeah. sometimes we skip dinner sometimes we skip lunch you know it, see people are doing it like some timetable it's not like that you have to respond to your body if right. you are feeling hungry just eat if you are not it's okay it's okay not to eat yeah. you know so whenever you eat, you have to concentrate on what you are taking. See, in, since you're feeling hungry, uh, you should not eat all the garbage foods or whatever available. You no, know? you should be aware what you need to take mm. because this is a uh, beautiful gift from God. We have to take care of it. Whatever we put inside, you no, know, it matters. That helps a lot to lead a healthy and happy lifestyle. Definitely, definitely. Yes, that's a very beautiful thought that you have presented. Um, I think we can open the session for questions now. Yes. If there are questions um, from anyone. Yeah, I think Harsh wanted to ask something. Yeah, first of all, can, can you guys hear me? Yes, you yeah. can. First of all, a fantastic journey. I mean, it's quite incredible. You know, it's been eight, nine years you've been doing this. And not just that, uh, the pain of going through the surgery. You know, a lot of people come to this when they are feeling the, the pain and they figure out a change there. But this was after the surgery. So first of all, kudos for, you know, being able to do this and really an inspirational story uh i've taken notes on this entire podcast i will share with everyone because it's it's a little crazy my my question is really about change and mindset right when and we know this you know in in amongst people we speak to how do you get people to see a certain way because in your case what happened was you were undergoing so much pain with, uh, you know, your weight management and everything. And you bought into this doctor's philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's very possible that if someone else was in your place, they would be like, what is this guy talking about? Mm -hmm. So you bought into it. How are you coaching people to see things differently? Yes. Okay. So when people come to know, uh, I don't explain about low carb I fat. Uh, what are the foods they are taking? Uh, they have to take. What I am going to suggest? No, I don't discuss about these things. Instead, uh, we will discuss about the parameters. Whatever the parameters are, high or less, no, we'll discuss about it and explain why it has raised. So people are thinking. So we will explain the science behind it. People are, see. For example, if they're uh, 
um, what to say, if their insulin levels are high, they are not aware about the insulin levels, fasting insulin, postprandial insulin, no? So if it is high, they are thinking that their fasting sugar is uh, normal, they are not diabetic, they are not pre-diabetic, no? So we will explain all these things. If the fasting insulin is high, you might get into diabetes, maybe in a year or in, a f in five years, in 10 years, it might happen. So you have to be aware. So we educate people instead of giving them, uh, you have to follow this thing, uh, you have to eat this amount of food, no? So we educate them, we will share. See, I've seen a lot of videos of Eric Berg. Um, uh, maybe he'll convert. Guru. <laughs> so, so we have seen a lot of Eric Berg's video and Tim Knox's um, uh, writers. No, so those are the things helped me to get into this. And I've read the uh, obesity course, Jason Fung. No? How Dr. Vijay Raghavan educated us, that's how we educated people. Okay. They have to understand why they are going to eat this food and that food. That's what is more important. Got it. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, all these names you've mentioned, I think a lot of us in this community can, you know, re relate to this. And, you know, Eric Berg, uh, Dr. Jason Funk. My, my question then becomes, you know, like people, I mean, normal masses, they can, we can, we have access to these things. But what is the coaching behavior that you have to get out of people? Because someone who is, let's say, highly diabetic might be willing to try this out. But people mm -hmm. who are at 5.7, 5.96 um, on HPA1C, they don't see that. They think that they are in the normal range. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, to explain this concept of fasting insulin, they're like, this is not even considered, you know, a, a normal test in the medical community. So what are you guys talking about? So, you know, how do you hammer it into people is my is my real question. Yeah, I understand, Hush. See, uh, now uh, this online consultation, online sessions, no, it, it's, it got viral after this uh, Corona. Yeah. We were meeting people in person. It was actually easy to connect with them when you meet in person, no, that helped us to transform them. That's how we changed. They changed. That's how they understood and changed. No, that's, when that, people, that's fair. Yeah. So yeah. when they come to consultation, we explain about why they need to eat and uh, why uh, uh, they have to look at those parameters also. Now, doctors are suggesting just the passing sugar and uh, cholesterol, all those normal things, no? Why they have to uh, check their HSCRP? Why they have to check their homocysteine or passing insulin, no? So we explain about those things. And mo more, more than that, it was behind, the doctor was there behind us. And I think that so, is a, a big, big deal to actually have yes. a, a practicing doctor who is yeah. uh, into this field. Now, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan used to say to all his patients that if he, they don't want to follow his instruction, better don't come to him. <laughs> that's yeah. Awesome. So yeah, that's fair. Clear. <laughs> so, um, I think Yogesh has a question. Yeah. Yogesh, right. Thanks, Prajakta. So, a uh, fantastic journey. I think uh, very commendable. I think we, we, uh, we anyways, would have... Uh, a lot of uploads towards both of you, but uh, I would also uh, specifically want to applaud the Vijay for the kind of kind of backing that he's uh, provided it because it's it's the most difficult part between spouses. Anyways, uh, my question is uh, more to do with uh, typically during pregnancies and uh, I mean, are you seeing so uh, how challenging it was during that particular period? Because uh, again, there will be a lot of uh, mindsets around us and then uh, whether they are like uh, another level challenge, another level of challenge that you came across. The other thing is about, uh, are you seeing any changes in the kids, right? I mean, because I, I believe, I mean, I, that probably that, that's a question, but I believe they are also following the similar kind of foods and not high carb. And are you seeing any changes in the kids? Because uh, I mean, whatever that I'm seeing and uh, around uh, around me in terms of people, uh, I mean, kids typically having high carb versus low, low carb kind of foods. And there's a there's a lot of difference in between um, their intellect and uh, the kind of let's say behavioral uh, behavioral aspects of those kids. So, uh, do you want to reflect on that? Yes. Um, okay. 
so uh, first thing um, after my first pregnancy i started low carb diet but um uh, during my second pregnancy i was in low carb diet only great yeah okay yeah. but i maintain my carbs um, in limit uh, maybe yeah. uh, 150 to 200 grams of carbs were there uh, which is from uh, natural source complex carbs only Mm-hmm. not those refined or simple cups for sure i have taken for my sweet tooth i've taken sweet, uh, fruits yeah so uh, i have taken fiber rich rice that's how it went yeah and for my kids you know uh, i i know how my health uh, how what are the issues i was facing yeah. so i i'm right. very particular about the food they are taking right. so i feed lot of protein and fat rich foods only maximum after eating this protein and uh, fat rich foods uh, with vegetables i will offer carbs if they want they will have yeah if they yeah. don't want it's okay to leave it right no yeah. um from my elder one is actually very brisk and active that's what i'm saying yeah i mean I, absolutely that's the use case yeah. yeah generally kids don't uh, do what we say they do what yep. we do yep so, what we they start eating healthy food definitely they will also support us and they will also end up eating in healthy foods yeah so that's yeah. what i yeah. understand i can mention that my both of my sons are eating good amount of vegetables excellent i, I didn't fed them they are seeing our plate and they are also yeah. eating this in the same way right whenever right. we eat salad even our kids used to share with us and uh, whenever right. there is a guest to our house they will yeah. be very surprised that kids are eating so much of vegetable every day absolutely no that, that's really nice to know it, it can be another powerful use case that is already residing with both of you i mean uh, your your success your remission is one but otherwise for from a future generation and what we can give to them that's amazing and uh, just one 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 final thing probably the the way you have been talking right and the way i think i believe both of you coach i think and uh, dr vijay raghavan also i think i can relate that a lot i mean uh, in terms of how i i interact with people how i can basically coach people so that's another discussion probably we can take it offline but i'm really happy to be part of this discussion thanks yeah thank you thank you thanks thanks akesh yeah uh, priyanka i think has a question priyanka can you unmute and go ahead yes um hi sindhu hi vijay really inspiring to hear your story you know i mean you've been at this journey since 2015 that's a long time and you know the kind of uh, you know wealth of knowledge that you have amassed is like i think precious for all of us in this community because you know we can just you know i mean the fact that you are just like a message away is like such a good you know um, comforting thing to know um my question is that in your journey like since you've uh, coached so many people have you come across specialist healthcare specialist uh, specifically you know doctors etc who have you know taken your coaching and how easy they are to coach or resistant to this uh, style of coaching and what have your experiences been yeah we met a lot of doctors gyne uh, ophthal uh, even nephro doctors Uh, homeopathy or ayurvedic doctors we met lot of doctors even my homeopathic uh, do- uh, client i mean she is a homeopathy doctor um, she had infertility issue she didn't uh, having struggling yeah you know, yeah she she didn't have baby for 10 years mm-hmm. yeah so wow. she was taking uh, infertility treatments everything but after consulting uh, dr vijayaragavan and me after starting low carb high fat diet in a year she got pregnant naturally without any treatment so uh, now her baby is 4 uh, to 5 years i think wow so uh, yeah another story is also there and a lot of doctors uh, they followed and they reversed they put their uh, conditions on remission mode so wow so it was it easy to <laughs> Yeah. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Whenever doctors used to come for consultation, they will be very clear that uh, they will ease us. Like better you forget about doctor and you can treat me as a normal uh, patient. So that's how uh, most of the doctors used to respond. Actually, I get nervous <laughs> much. <laughs> like now, so they will ease me actually. 
Yeah, because that's what I was thinking. Because, you know, when you start coaching a doctor through this lifestyle, I mean, it, it can be daunting, especially for newbies like us, especially, you know. So that's what I was thinking, because uh, there are one or two doctors who've asked me, and they've been curious, and I've been trying to explain. They get the explanation, and I'm wondering, okay, if I start coaching, uh, what kind of conversations? Because, you know, they are not normal population. They can understand the science. So we should we go ahead and tell them the science behind and, you know, all the explanations, unlike normal people? Do you treat them similar or do you, do you treat them slightly differently? In my case, um, they felt actually, I myself a testimonial for them. No, I don't need to. They right. Wasn't, to explain much because they are seeing me with one kidney i'm taking good amount of fats salt and taking a good amount of proteins they're seeing me so it was a positive a plus thing for me so there wasn't a need of explaining much and doctors because dr vijayaraghavan was there no um, right. he explained all those things no actually d leaf helped me to um, understand all these uh, parameters and explain about the science and D-Life actually helped me to gain more knowledge about these uh, metabolic issues. Now, before that, I was dealing with food, uh, all those things only. So right. D-Life actually helped me to do this. See, before yeah. D-Life, she was doing only consultation on the diet part uh, where doctor mm -hmm. used to take care of other things. But after D-Life, she used to manage the entire thing without any doctor support. Yes. So that's the difference. That's great to you know. Thanks. Thanks. That was really, you know, uh, really good to like hear all this so much experience and knowledge. And, you know, it definitely is. Uh, thanks for sharing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone? Is there any questions on chat? No. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have answered all the questions. Yes. One last question. Where can we find your second book? I didn't find it. I just put order the first one. No, it, it is not actually available on Amazon right now. So it will be okay. available after a month. All right. Okay. So if there are no other questions, I would just conclude this um, conversation with saying a big thank you to Sindhu and Vijay. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for your time and explaining your inspiring journey. Um, also, it's really a, a, a very big learning in terms of how a person changes, how the mindset changes, and how they not only inculcate good habits, good knowledge in their own life, but also try to impart the same to others and go beyond that and turn it into a venture, write books about it, to read. It, it's really a very extraordinary journey, I must say. Yes. Um, I also you. thank uh, every... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I also thank everyone present here. And those who are new, I would like to remind that D-Life is organizing uh, India's first metabolic health conference on 27th, 28th and 29th of October. The information is available on the Twitter handle and other social media platforms. Do check that out as well. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Let me remind you about tomorrow's session that will be held at 2 p.m. IST. Do join that as well to listen to another similar um, journey of low carb diet and healing and putting the metabolic conditions into remission have a lovely rest of the weekend thank you projecta and thank you to d life forum uh, for the wonderful opportunity to share our experience and uh, our, our journey for the last eight nine years uh, so thank you very much thank you projecta thank you d life and special thanks to uh sashi anup arun kumar thank you and thanks to all